In this Universe Sandbox video, we're creating three different Star Wars systems, one for each movie in the original trilogy. And if this video gets 600 likes, we'll do another Star Wars video and create even more systems. All right, so we're gonna start in a new simulation here and let's turn off the Milky Way background because in Star Wars, they're not in the Milky Way. So the tattoo system is a binary system, which you can see in the movie from uh, the surface of Tatooine. And it looks like we have one yellow main sequence star and then one redder star. Um, so we're gonna actually start, let's put the sun in and then binary of the sun, we're gonna do Proxima Centauri, which is gonna be smaller, but have that red look to it. Okay, looks good. Looks like they're orbiting each other. So let's start by putting in Tatooine. So let's do random rocky planet. We're gonna put it about the same distance that Earth is from the sun. And let's name these stars really quick. So now we got our suns and we have a planet here. Whoa, this planet's looking really cool already. Sadly, we are gonna have to strip almost all of the water away. So to start, let's let's get our sizing right. So the radius in kilometers of Tatooine, according to Wikipedia, all the links for this are gonna be linked in the description, but it is 5,250 kilometers and the, it is composed of mostly silicate. So this is actually a pretty good composition we got going already. So we're gonna leave that. So this is what Tatooine looks like from space. So we're gonna try to get as close as we can to that. That looks pretty cool. So I know right away, we're gonna need to turn down the opacity of the atmosphere. It looks to be about here and Rayleigh scattering is definitely gonna be higher. About there, it looks like. So on Tatooine, only 1% of the surface has water on it. We're just gonna turn this down all the way and then bring it up so a tiny, tiny, tiny bit has water, like that. Maybe even less than that, right there. So you can see there's a tiny bit of water and there's not really any anywhere else. So these clouds are gonna be unrealistic. There's not gonna be much weather activity because there's no water. Just thin to cover the surface like that. And let's start coloring it to be what we want. And I think I'm gonna change the elevation map just so we don't have all of this like little sections here which I don't like. Okay, so actually if we use Io's elevation map, that looks decent. So I think we're gonna start with this. Let's actually flip it, I think, and offset it about there. And then let's change the colors again. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for Tatooine compared to the picture. Um, and let's make sure the temperatures are gonna be really warm on here, like what we want. So let's speed up time and check out what our temperatures are gonna be. So it looks like it's gonna need to be a little warmer. Luckily, we can just add some atmosphere layers, which will actually make it very warm. Okay, it's definitely heating up more now. So with five atmosphere layers, we get around a 30 degrees Celsius temperature, which is warm like a desert. Let's add a tiny bit of tilt to it. It's tilted a little bit, but let's give it a little bit more to get some more seasons so we don't have really, really cold poles like it looks like we're having. So one day on Tatooine lasts 34 hours. Um, so now we got that adjusted. And then the orbital period, one year on Tatooine is 304 days. So we're gonna set that too. Okay, so now here's Tatooine. Um, we can check its habitability. It's gonna be pretty low because it's such a desert planet, but it is 13.6. Um, I'm going to add some city lights, uh, just a little bit on the back. Maybe not that much. That's pretty, here we go. We'll leave it like that. All right. Perfect. So Tatooine actually has three moons. Um, its primary moon is called Gomrazin. So let's add that. Let's add an orbit and it looks pretty much just like a standard moon. Perfect. So now we got Gomrazin and there's not any information on the different, on the sizes of the moon or anything, but we just know that this one is the biggest one. Tatooine's second moon is called Chenini, and this one has a very highly elliptical orbit. Okay, so now we got a very elliptical orbit here. Its last moon is called Germeza, and that's just like a pretty normal moon. And get our base color off, and we'll just make it white. And there we go. Um, and one interesting thing about these moons is they are named after towns, real towns in real life from Tunisia that they filmed Star Wars in. All right, so here's Tatooine, and we got its moons in a binary system. So if you were to actually land on Tatooine, you could see, yep, there they are, both suns. You could see Tattoo 1 and Tattoo 2. It's like the sunset uh, from A New Hope. Let's move on to the Hoth system. All right, so we're gonna start a new simulation again for the Hoth system, and then also turn off the Milky Way background again. And so Hoth's sun, the star is just called Hoth. So we're gonna throw the sun in here and name it Hoth. Oh, that's not Hoth. There are six planets in the Hoth system. Cold planet Hoth is actually the last one. So I'm just gonna put in the planets really quick. 
So the Hoth system has four rocky planets. Three of them we don't know the name of, and the last one's going to be Hoth. So this planet here is going to be Hoth. Um, and Hoth is actually going to be our last planet. So first we're actually going to start with Jass. And this already looks pretty similar. And Jass has a total of 24 moons. The 11th moon, Jass Krill, is actually a habitable moon. This moon right here is going to be Jass Krill. It already has an atmosphere on it. So let's name it Jass Krill. And Jass Krill is actually a swampy, um, habitable moon. I couldn't find a picture of Jass Krill from space, but we're just gonna simulate what we think it looks like. Here's like a picture of it on the surface so we know that it's covered in vegetation. And I think that's looking pretty good. So we can just leave it like that. So now we got Jass Krill and Jass, and now let's get to work on Hoth. Um, we're just gonna leave the rest of these just like they are because we don't actually know very much about them. But here's Hoth so far. So on Hoth, the radius is 3,600 kilometers. Um, and here's a picture of Hoth, and we're gonna try to recreate that. So you can see its surface is, it's actually not all ice. Only 33% of the surface is actually ocean and the rest is just like snow covered land. So we're just gonna go in here and we can go freeze all. And then we can, that's a pretty good amount of ice, I think. And we can take the rest of this land and just make it white. And let's actually get some bluish color in here. Get similar to that picture, maybe darker. And that already looks really, really good. Okay, let's adjust some of our motion. So it actually takes 526 days for Hoth to go around its star. So it is pretty far from its star. The rotational period is about the same as Earth, 24 hours. And Hoth also has three moons, just like Tatooine does. There's nothing really known about these moons at all. So I'm just gonna add three moons really quick. Okay, so here's Hoth. I j just to see, I wanna check the habitability. Not gonna be high at all. 17%, which is actually higher than I thought it would be. And so now we got Hoth and its moons. And in the Hoth system with Jass, the Jass gas giant here, and Jass Krill, our uh, jungle moon. All right, let's move on to Endor. So the Endor system is also a binary system, just like the tattoo system. Perfect, that looks good. And let's name them Endor 1 and Endor 2. So the Endor system actually only has one planet. Um, and that planet is Endor. And Endor is a gas giant. So let's go ahead and put a random gas giant in here. To, it looks very similar to Polyphemus, which I actually made for Avatar. I did Pandora from Avatar, so go watch that video. Um, and I'm thinking maybe we start with Polyphemus just so I don't have to do all those bands again. So I'm actually gonna use this as Endor. So we have that now. And we know that the radius of Endor is 24,475 kilometers. So it's not that big of a, ga of a gas giant. So now we have that there. And Endor has nine moons with, with the forest moon, the most famous one, being the last moon. So I'm gonna quickly put some in here and briefly describe each one because there is um, there is information on almost all of them. First one's called Alprazar, and all we know about this is it's very metallic. So I'm just gonna go in and make it 100% iron. Next one is called Fentaka, and this one only reflects 10% of the light it receives. So it's very dark. There you go. Okay, so Fantaka is a very dark moon. And then next we have one called Ghouls. This one is said to have a patchwork surface, sort of like that. So we will leave it like that. And then our next one is called Hualmaka. And this one has an irregular shape to it. So it's thought that it could be a comet. So let's actually, I'm gonna replace it with Deimos um, so we can get sort of an irregular shape on it because yeah, that has an irregular shape. And then rename this to Huamaka. Okay, next one is interesting. It's Kef Burr, also known as the ocean moon of Endor. So let's make this one a regular moon. So we know the radius on this one to be 1862. So it's actually pretty close already. And this one is almost entirely covered in water but it does have a couple small islands. So let's just get it probably there. What islands it does have, they're gonna be growing vegetation. And let's make sure that our temperature is gonna be okay on here. Okay, so it looks like two atmosphere layers are gonna be what we need. Um, let's make this atmosphere a little bit less opaque. About here, turn this up. Perfect, so there's Kef Burr. Let's actually change our interface color too. Also known as the ocean moon of Endor. Next one's called Korkar. 
And this one's a highly reflective ice moon, which has liquid water underneath. So let's put some water on here and then freeze it. This moon's actually very similar to uh, Europa in our system. That actually looks really cool. And then there's one called Charles, which we'll just put there. And then we're gonna do Vix. And this one is very similar to Titan. It rains methane. Okay, now the moment you've all been waiting for, the forest moon of Endor, also just called Endor. So let's put that one right here, name it, give it its full name, the forest moon of Endor. It is almost all land. Only 8% of the surface is covered in water. Probably about that much is all we need. And I already know that this elevation map is not gonna be what we want. Uh, this one usually does okay. We know that the radius is going to be 2,400, and 50 kilometers. Um, this one might need a tiny bit of hydrogen on it to be able to hold. Yeah, water's dropping, so let's add a tiny bit of hydrogen. Yep, perfect. And so that looks good for the water to land ratio. Um, I know that this is gonna have to be vegetation. Definitely gonna want it to be darker. You can see on the planet it has very, very dark green forests like that okay and then let's put an atmosphere on it put it about there and that's looking pretty good already so we know that one day on endor here is going to be 18 hours so it takes 18 hours for one day on here and let's make sure that our temperatures are going to be okay let's add two atmosphere layers because that's what worked good for the other one okay that looks like it's working pretty well for the forest moon too Gonna have a temperature of 18.5. All right, so now we got the forest moon of Endor. Oh boy, looks like we just destroyed the system by speeding it up too fast. One second. All right, so we got a much more stable system here now with Kef Burr, the ocean moon of Endor, and then the forest moon of Endor over here. All right, so if you guys wanna see more universe sandbox content, leave a like. Thank you so much for watching. Um, join my Discord server, uh, and I'll see you guys next time.